update out the text messages before and after Page went missing on September 22nd of 2010. Now, we could see that Page asked Jacob Bumpus for a ride, and he eventually did pick her up that, uh, that evening. He then brought her to his house in Taylor Mill. We also learned that some of Bumpus's friends stopped by for a bit around 1.50 in the morning of September 23rd. Now, they did say that they saw Page, and everything seemed normal. But it was around 4.18 that morning that investigators say Bumpus's cell phone pinged off of a cell phone tower near East Fork Lake. Keep in mind, this is pre-GPS on everyone's phone. Now, here's an exchange with the prosecution and former police officer Brian Froge. This was in the location of the cell phone tower. That would have been the cell phone tower on Half Acre Road from defendant's text message at 4.18 a.m., is that correct? That's correct. And um, based on the timing of the text messages and the locations that you saw, including the text message to Andrew Drummond at 5 o'clock a.m., it would have made sense that he really wouldn't have had time to go any farther than this than turning around. That's kind of why we limited it to that area, because of the time frame. Then it was defense. Then it was the defense's turn. Attorney Lewis Serkin posed the idea that Page's body was actually planted in the East Fork Lake area sometime after she initially disappeared. Here he is questioning Froge about all the media coverage that this case has received over the years. If there's all this publication and all this talking about um, East Fork Lake and that area being prime like that. And that not being found in a period of eight, nine, ten years, it's very small items. Um, isn't it if somebody had done something with that, um, would have gone back to get those? I've never worked a case where somebody did something and got away with it for any amount of time and then went back and redid something. I've never personally worked a case okay, but, that where that would happen. But in your reading, you always say that the people always go back to the scene of the crime. Objection. I've, I've, never, I've never witnessed yeah. that. If I did, I missed them. Now, in that line of questioning, we saw just how close that the searchers were over the years to finding or to the location that Paige Johnson's body was ultimately found. Just a few hundred feet that they missed it by a little hand-drawn map showed how close they were. Now, the prosecution still has four witnesses to call, but the judge asked both the prosecution and defense to work together and streamline the remainder of this trial to try and get it finished by Friday. Now, that could include going late tomorrow and Friday as well to make it happen. For now, in Batavia, I'm Christian Hauser. Back to you all in the studio. Christian, thank you. And to stay up to date with this trial, follow Christian on Twitter. His handle is at the bottom of the screen. He'll be live tweeting any updates. And the trial does resume tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. From breaking news to feel-good stories, Local 12 has it all. Tap subscribe and click the links for more content like this.